How's it going guys? In today's video we're going to be going over how we can create this Space News app in SwiftUI and it's going to use an API from the Space News and it's going to retrieve the data and give us some articles that we can look at in a detail view such as this and in case we're curious about the article we can go ahead and click on it and it will take us to Safari so we can read more. So it's a very simple project, but it's also very cool because we will be using APIs and we're also going to be using environment data. So you can get a very basic understanding on how to do this. Let's go ahead and get started immediately by creating a new project in Xcode. And we're just gonna close the sidebars and change this to an iPhone 13. Then we want to minimize this a bit and resume it just to make sure that Xcode is working properly. And while we wait for that, I want to go ahead and click on this project folder and hold Option Command plus N so that we can create a new group. And this group is going to be called Views. And once again, click on that folder and create another group, which is going to be called API, so that we have a small bit of project structure. And we're going to drag the content view into the Views folder. So now we have a project structure that we can follow and the next thing we have to do is go and download a package which is going to be the cached async image package. And this is because as you may know when you use async image in SwiftUI it's kind of buggy, there's lots of bugs in there and sometimes the views load a bit slower but with this one it helps us load the views a bit faster by caching the image. So you want to go ahead and hold file and click on add packages. And inside here, go ahead and copy and paste in the link. I'm going to leave it in the description down below so you can just do that and add the package and add the package again. Now we can close that and go to our content view once again. And the very first thing I want to take care of is creating the data that we can display to the user. And to do this, we'll go ahead and click on our API folder or right click on it and type in new file. And we're going to use a Swift file for this and it's going to be called API Client and click on Create. Now let's go ahead and go to the website where we have the endpoint, which is spaceflightnewsapi.net and I'm going to leave that in the comment section down below as well. We just want to go to Documentation and in Documentation, click on Article, then go ahead and click on Articles, click on Try it out and down here we can go ahead and execute it and it's going to tell us that we have this endpoint over here and the endpoint is going to give us all of this information. But inside here, we're just going to create another comment, which is called API endpoint. And we're just going to insert the link so we can use it later whenever we want. And of course, you can click on this link and it's going to open up a JSON file or just JSON data from the internet. And you'll notice that it has ID, title, URL, image, and it's in an array of dictionaries. So now we need to pass this data and display to the user, but first we need to process it and decode it. So we're going to do this all inside the API client, but first we need to create a data class. So here we'll type in struct space data, and that's going to be of type codable and also identifiable since as you noticed, each one of these items has an ID, so we don't have to randomly generate it. We can just use the one that it provided. So inside here, we type in var ID. It's going to be of type int. And we're not going to be using all of the fields, so just copy the ones you want, or you can copy the ones that I'm copying. I'm just going to go ahead and select a few of these. But for example, I'm not going to take the launches or the events. So let's go ahead and copy the other ones. Var title of type string var URL of type string. And it's very important you notice that I'm spelling it exactly the same way as it's written here. If there's a capital letter, you need to follow that or it's going to provide an error because we cannot find that key. So var image URL is going to be of type string. Var news site is of type string. Var summary is also of type string and var published at is also of type string. And right below that, we're going to go ahead and create a class called Space API, which is going to handle retrieving the data. And it's also going to update the data live in our environment object. So here we're going to go ahead and type in at main actor, because we're going to use it as a main actor, which means it's updating the UI. And we're going to type in Space API 
which is of type observable object, or that conforms to the observable object protocol. So first we need to go ahead and create an at published variable of news, which is going to be of type an array of space data. And we're going to initialize that immediately as an empty array. Then we'll create a function called get data. And the first thing we have to do is create a guard, which is going to say URL is equal to, or if there's a result for this URL, and we need to insert, of course, URL with the string. And inside here, we need to insert the API. So go ahead and just copy this part right here and paste it inside the string. And if you want to control the amount of articles that get displayed, go ahead and add a question mark underscore and add a limit, which I'm going to equal to 10, which is the default limit. But of course you can change that to 20 or you can change it to five to suit your own needs. And if it doesn't really return anything, we're just going to type in return. So either there's something inside here and it assigns it to URL or else it returns out of this and nothing happens. But let's pretend everything went good, which there's no reason why it shouldn't. We're going to go ahead and type in URL session dot shared dot data task and it's going to be with the URL and then we need to get the data, the response and the error in and the first thing we want to check is if there's any data we can pass. So here we type in guard, let data equal data, else this is going to happen. We're going to type in let temp error equal error, which is not going to be nil because something went wrong, to localize description. Then we need to call dispatch queue dot main dot async. And inside here, we're going to assign the news object with some dummy data. So it's going to be an array, space data, and we're going to fill out all of these by hand just to give it one dummy object sample. In case there's no internet or in case it fails to get the request, we're still going to display something to the user. So first we'll start with the ID, which can just be set to zero and a title, which will say error, a URL, which will also just be error, error. On title, we're going to insert the temp error and on the rest, we can just add error. Or in the summary, you can type in try, swiping down to refresh as soon as you have internet. And in the end, we'll type in error. So this is making a huge assumption that it failed because they're missing internet. And in general, there's not going to be any other reasons other than the API failing by itself. So in any case, if they're out of internet, at least we can handle that. Otherwise, we need to update this code to handle more errors. But for this example, it's absolutely fine. We're just going to do that. And it's going to ask us to return because we're still inside a guard block, which requires us to return or to throw an error. Now let's go ahead and try to get that JSON data. So to do that, we'll type in let space data equal try, and it might throw an error. So we have to add the exclamation mark and we're going to provide JSON decoder dot decode and it's going to decode the space data dot self from the data. And if that works, we can go ahead and dispatch Q dot main dot async, and we can update the code. So here I just want to add a log that says loaded new data successfully. And we're going to type in articles are going to equal the space data dot count. And if we get a result with this print statement, it means we retrieve the data successfully. And finally, let's go ahead and call the self.news and assign it with the space data that we've just retrieved. So each time we make this request, it's going to update our space data array and it's going to update it with the latest information. And it's very important for our URL session that is a data task to make sure that we resume it. So here type in dot resume. And now just to make sure that everything's working correctly, let's go to our content view. So the first thing we have to do is go ahead and create a state object. So at state object var data is going to equal the space API instance. And we're going to inject this into the environment so that all the other views can use this freely. But first I want to go ahead and create a navigation view. And inside the navigation view, we can create a V stack and let's give it a navigation title immediately. Why not? We're going to call it space news. And we're also going to give it the environment object of data. Then we can go ahead and call on appear. 
And this is just to make sure that everything's working correctly. We're going to go ahead and call data.getData. Now, as soon as we run the app, we should see in our logs that we have some items. So there the app has loaded. And if we come back here, it's going to say loaded new data successfully. And there are 10 articles, which means we have retrieved all the articles we want. If you actually want to see what we loaded, you're also welcome to go ahead and just print the space data directly. You're going to get a huge list of JSON. And yeah, I'm just going to use the count because it just tells me that I got everything I needed and that there was no error with our data class and we have all of these fields to use. But let's go back to our content view because we are not done yet. Now inside here, we're going to go ahead and type in at state private var opaque, which is opacity, and it's going to equal 0, 0.0 because as soon as the app loads, I want it to fade in from white just to make it look a bit better and smooth when you open the app. So here we'll type in with animation. We're going to type in ease in with a duration of two seconds, and we're going to set the opacity to 1.0 over the lapse of two seconds. Then inside here, we're going to have another view called news view, which we have not created yet, but we're just going to add the opacity here and set it to the opacity. Now it's going to say we haven't created it, of course, so we need to go ahead and do that immediately. So inside the view, just right click, new file, and add Swift UI view, and click on next. And here we'll type in news view. And click on create. And if everything went well, we can go ahead and refresh this, and we're going to see hello world in the center. So we managed to complete the hard part. Now let's go to our news view. And actually we have to create one more view before that and go ahead and create new file again. Click on Swift UI view. And this is going to be to manage each article. We're just gonna type it news article. So we can customize that freely and click on create. So we're going to start with creating the news article first. So we can style it and see what it's going to look like. So first let's go ahead and type in let title equal a string. Then we need let's image URL equal a string, let site name equal a string, and let the summary equal a string. So these are the only fields we're going to be using from our data class. Of course, you can include the other ones if you want, but I just want to display this information in this view, and it will give us the error that we have not added this to the news article preview. So go ahead and fix that and add some dummy data, such as code palace. Image URL will be something random, which I don't have yet, so just type in anything. Or you, of course, you can add your own placeholder image, find something online, that's up to you. For the site name, we can type in code palace, and the summary is check out code palace for more cool tutorials. So now we have all this information that we can freely use in the preview. So whatever we create inside here will be displayed on this preview. But the first thing we have to create inside here is a V stack with the alignment of dot leading. And the text is going to be set to the site name, which as you can see right there is Code Palace YouTube. And I want the foreground color to be dot blue and for this to be italic. Then we should go ahead and create an H stack with the alignment set to dot center. And I actually forgot, but we have to import the cached async image so we can use it down here. Then we can go ahead and type in cached async image. And as always, that requires a URL of type URL, which is going to be the image URL. And I actually wanted to add an animation for the images that are still loading. So go ahead and add a transaction, which is going to be of type transaction. And that's going to require an animation, which we will specify as ease in, ease out. Then with all of this, we have a face to take care of. So for face in, and if there's an image, if let image equal face dot image, then we have an image that we can modify. Otherwise, we're going to not have any image to use so we can provide a placeholder. So here we'll just type in image. And now we have a view, so we can call resizable, scale to fit, clip shape, because I want them to have rounded edges, so clip shape. And we'll take a rounded rectangle with a corner radius of 20. Else, we're going to provide an h stack 
that will display your placeholder. Or you don't have to add an H tag there, you can add anything you want. It can even be a progress view in case there's nothing to display. And it's actually called progress view, not just progress. So what you should see on the screen is a progress view being displayed. And with that, this will be the placeholder. Otherwise, of course, you can add your own image like a color.blue if you want. And of course, I would recommend adding a frame with a height of 200 and 100 or something along those lines so that you'll get a placeholder like this. So whatever you do, add your placeholder inside here. And I'm just going to type in placeholder. But uh, next, let's go under the H tag and type in text and add the title of dot font, which is going to be a headline with a padding of eight. And then the text of the summary, which will take a line limit of six. We don't want that to go too far. A font of dot body and a padding of eight as well. So it might look very sloppy at the moment, but we have this kind of box right here. If you click on it, you'll notice it's going to look like that. So when we insert it in a list, it's going to look a lot nicer. And of course, if you add the placeholder, it will look much more like an article. But now it's time to go to the news view and finish this project off. So of course, the first thing we have to do inside the news view is include the environment object. Environment object. Which will be var data. And since we're not creating it anymore, we just have to refer to it, which is the space API. And we need to include this inside the preview or else it doesn't really know what we're talking about. So here just type in space API. And then we also need to contact the environment with backslash dot open URL as a variable of open URL. And finally, private var text width, which will be responsible for the width of our articles. Now it's the fun part. We can display the data. We can go ahead and type in list and create a for each loop. So for each data dot news, that will get all the articles inside. And we want to handle each news article separately. So news in, and to make it simple, all we have to do is provide the news article and insert the fields that we've required. And of course you can make this simple by only requiring the object and inserting it directly inside there. Or you can do it this way, it's up to you. In this example, I found this fitting. So news dot title, news.image url, news.site name or a new site and the summary, which is news.summary. So that's going to take care of loading the dummy data. And I also wanted to add an on tap gesture. So on tap gesture. And each time they tap on it, we want to open a URL. So we type in open URL, which will take a URL of string of news dot URL, which is never going to be empty. So we have to add the exclamation mark. And of course, we want the list to be refreshable. So type in refreshable. And each time they try to refresh, we'll type in data dot get data. So it's going to refresh the news articles and give us the latest information. But with that being done, we can go ahead and run the program. And you should see a bunch of news articles appearing in our emulator. So none of the images have loaded, which means we did something wrong and we have to go and check what we're missing. So let's go to our news article. And it actually looks like I forgot to add the transition. So here we need to go ahead and type in transition dot opacity. So apparently what I figured out is that if you want this actually to work, you're going to have to go ahead and make sure you have a placeholder in here. So the H stack must remain inside the else condition in the cached async image. But now if we go ahead and reload the program, you're going to notice that we're going to have some images loading in our app and we're going to successfully have a space news app where we can click on articles that will take us to web pages. So, I mean, even I learned something today, which was we must have the else statement or else it's not going to load anything initially because this is asynchronous, which means it needs something there before it can transition from it. But with that being said, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And of course, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to look at them. Otherwise, with that being said, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video.